meet the steam-powered 1969 Pontiac Grand Prix, also known as the SC101 prototype. And yes, you did hear that right. This Grand Prix was powered by steam. Much of it was due to the upcoming changes in emissions regulations all companies knew they were facing at this time. So GM was not only looking at ways to reduce pollution from existing engines, they were also experimenting with alternative power plants to meet these new standards. GM started to look at steam power again and seeing if it was a feasible alternative while maintaining the existing power and performance that consumers demanded. GM chose the Grand Prix because its newly designed platform gave the engineers just the right amount of engine compartment space to fit the steam engine into. They equipped the Grand Prix with all the modern accessories that consumers demanded, such as air conditioning, power steering, power windows, locks, and even brakes. The design also had to be simple enough that the driver could basically get into the vehicle and drive it with very little knowledge of the operation of the vehicle, because if you made it too complicated, likely no one would buy it anyhow. The heat from the steam generator was provided by an air blower fed twin turbine combustion chamber, which used a continuous spray of fuel and was ignited by a spark plug. The combustion chamber temperature was about 2500 degrees in the high fire setting. The steam generator held about a gallon of water during operation and the combustion system could be fed by gasoline, diesel fuel or kerosene. During the testing, uh, kerosene was the fuel of choice and the boiler generated about 800 psi steam pressure at about 725 degrees. The live steam was then routed to the steam expander which was laid out like a conventional piston engine. The engine was a 101 cubic inch engine, which hence the SC101 designation. It developed approximately 160 horsepower, which unfortunately was less than half of the 350 horsepower that was offered by the standard V8 engine that would typically power the base model Grand Prix J. The steam power plant was connected to an experimental, continuously variable toric transmission. This type of trendy was selected as it provided overdrive capability for maximum fuel economy and underdrive capability for optimized acceleration. The transmission provided forward, reverse, and neutral operation and eliminated the need for auxiliary expander to drive the accessories while the GP was stationary. The SE101 Grand Prix was one, not one that probably would be considered pretty space-age design for the time. Once the driver turned the key, he would have to wait about 30 to 45 seconds while the car built, built up adequate steam pressure. When the indicator light lit up, the car was ready to go. The accelerator and brakes worked in the same fashion as a standard gasoline-powered car, and therefore there was very little special procedures to be that needed to be learned other than the 30 to 45 second wait while the pressure built up. Although a revolutionary concept and a lot better than the Chevelle of a similar power plant at the time, the performance could be hardly considered adequate. Much of the problem came from the extra weight this power plant incurred and caused this car to tip the scales at just over 5,500 pounds which is around the same weight as a full-size crew cab Silverado of today. With the weight and only 160 horsepower under the hood, performance was, well, kind of fell short of acceptable. The 0 to 30 miles per hour time came in at a leisurely 6.6 .6 seconds, and the 0 to 60 miles per hour came in at an epic 37.25 seconds. <laughs> so... Unfortunately, not many people would have been very happy with this. And to top it all off, the fuel economy was nothing to write home about, either registering at only about 44 miles per gallon. So, with this project complete, the Grand Prix was unfortunately put into long-term storage where the steam expander just sat there and locked up with rust. Even though it was no longer a runner or contender for... Uh, future vehicle, the SE101 
101 found itself a new purpose as a display vehicle. Anyhow, thank you for joining me down this trip on memory lane. Uh, join me again very soon as we progress in our journey into the 1970s Pontiac Grand Prix. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Don't forget to like the video before you leave. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of any upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.